Hey everybody, um, my usual introduction on this channel is John the Other here, obviously, but today I have a few questions for a federal minister. Uh, so I'm going to introduce myself as, hello, my name is John Hembling, I'm a Canadian citizen and a resident of Vancouver, and today I have a few questions for the Honourable Minister for Women and Gender Equality, Marianne Monsef. According to the website of the Status of Women Canada, as that page exists today, Wednesday, 21st August 2019, the Federal Ministry is apparently calling men and boys in in a taxpayer-funded effort to enlist men and boys into the project of advancing what is being called gender equality. And as a Canadian, myself, and a taxpayer, and as a man, targeted by your program, Honourable Minister, I have a few questions that I would like answers to about this undertaking which targets me based on my gender identity that you are using my money and other Canadians to fund. Your Ministry of Women and Gender Equality introduces this new project of yours with the following statement. Quote, Last summer we traveled across the country to host a series of roundtable discussions on engaging men and boys on gender equality. So my first question is, did you engage any groups or individuals other than feminist groups during this outreach process? And did you conduct this outreach discreetly to avoid the attention of men or men's groups that were not overtly feminist? That is my first question. I only ask this because I was taken by surprise when I learned this week of your initiative to retrain men in a form of masculinity that is in conformity with feminist ideals. The first question, of course, is in two parts. The second part being, do you think it is reasonable or appropriate for women or for the Ministry of Women or for followers of feminist ideology to assume to decide for men what is or is not healthy masculine identity? This is not a rhetorical question in either part one or part two. And along with many other Canadians, I would like you or your ministry to answer this question. Additionally, in your opening description, you use the term gender equality, which might be misunderstood by average Canadians. The phrase appears 69 times on the webpage of the federal government status of women Canada. Do you use that term, gender equality, in the same way that the ongoing Equality Can't Wait campaign of the World Economic Forum uses it, which is to say, do you use the term gender equality as professional jargon, which the World Economic Forum on their own webpage redefines as, quote, globalization 4.0? I'll mention again that this is a question that is not rhetorical. And since your program appears to target me and half my fellow Canadians for re-education based on my sexual identity, I would like your answer to this question. The Government of Canada, Ministry of the Status of Women webpage, next claims that gender equality benefits all of us, including men and boys. Now, if you mean that globalization benefits all of us, is the reason for your use of that jargon term, gender equality, to replace the term globalization, is that calculated to avoid rejection by the public of Canadians' taxes being used to fund globalization? This is not a rhetorical question either. Are you disguising the term globalization because you know that Canadian citizens will quite reasonably reject it. I wait your answer. Honourable Minister, you also refer on the government's Status of Women webpage to Indigenous men in Canada fasting to signal their commitment to end violence against women and girls. I, as well, would like to see an end to violence against women and girls, as it is a term of jargon usually referring to domestic violence or intimate partner violence. This term is commonly used to deceive Canadian citizens into a false belief that domestic violence is primarily male violence against women, while multiple decades of research into the problem indicates that domestic violence is reciprocal, in which both male and female partners in a violent relationship initiate and participate in violence against their partner. So, I am, of course, happy to see your ministry voicing opposition to the continued use of that deceptive rhetoric, quote, violence against women, and I look forward to it being dismantled by future utterances of the Federal Ministry of the Status of Women. Now, as a new Canadian, Honourable Minister Monsef, you are using the sacrifices of Indigenous Canadian men to promote your male re-education project, so would you like to address the problem that the missing and murdered Aboriginal citizens of Canada are 75% male, while being addressed by Canada's public institutions with the misleading term missing and murdered Aboriginal women. 
Now, since you are using male sacrifice within Indigenous communities to prop up your initiative, perhaps your office might like to address this. Unless, of course, it is deemed to benefit all Indigenous Canadians that men and boys continue to be killed while we pretend that 25% of those who go missing who are female comprise the entire problem. I would like your answer. Like other questions I have for you, this is something that I, and I am sure many Indigenous Canadians, would like to hear your answer to. Thank you very much for your kind attention, uh, Honourable Minister Marianne Monsef, and everybody else watching this video today. And as always, have a lovely, lovely day.